Technologies. And he is going to talk to you about bed bugs, how to do, you know, a little bit about their biology, or a lot about their biology, why they're a problem, how they become a problem, how to do an inspection, how to manage them. You're just going to go away so full of information and itching at the same time. Please welcome Cody Pace. Can everyone hear me okay? Is that all right? Yes. All right. So, how many people in here have dealt with bed bugs before? One? It's funny. Two? Okay, that's been the most, like the last three presentations I've done. One or two. How many people have heard bed bugs now in the news? Lately? Quite a few. How many thought bed bugs were kind of a myth or just a bedtime story? You? All right. I've heard doctors that think they're a myth, and so you know, don't uh, don't feel bad. Even doctors are thinking and telling people that they've been a myth. Um, the reason we're talking about bed bugs today: How many people in here actually deal with managing pests besides weeds? One, two. Okay. <clears throat> this actually isn't uh, just for those uh, two individuals. This will be something that's great for all of you because bed bugs are something you can all encounter. Uh, as you go to public places, as you stay in hotels, and uh, they're becoming something that we're all going to have to deal with at one time or another, it seems like, in the upcoming future, because of the new kind of pandemic of bed bugs spreading throughout the world. So we're going to talk a little bit today about their biology and some different things. So you can have a, a good understanding, a proper understanding of what bed bugs are, how they uh, reproduce, and what you can do to protect yourselves. So, let's go through. There is Mr. Bedbug. Anyone know what a, has anyone ever seen a bed bug in here? They're up close? A few? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Only in our dreams. <laughs> you could get rid of them with like a bow and arrow or something, you know? Yeah, dark gun. Yeah, crossbow. But, um, there, there's our bed bug. Now we're going to talk, like I said, a little bit about their history and why there's been a resurgence throughout the world. How to ID them, their biology and their behavior. How sanitation relates to the control of bed bugs. Um, is there a disease associated with bed bugs? And what about their bite symptoms? How we avoid infestations? How we can detect them early? The use of mattress and box spring encasements to protect your bed. How do our clients, or how do we know if we have bed bugs? How we can kind of think outside of the box when we control them? And our treatment methods. So no one knows exactly why there's been a resurgence. And when I say that, we don't know exactly. There's no one, this is it. There's been quite a few different uh, things that have led to it, but there's no smoking gun, unfortunately. But one of the main things is these were very common before World War II. Before 1950, one in three houses in America were infested with bed books. Does anyone remember parents or grandparents having little kerosene jars underneath their bed feet? Anyone here? Never seen that? Quite a lot of people I, I talked to have heard that. Little mason jars underneath the bed feet and they fill it with kerosene. That was to uh, keep the bed bugs out. This is something that was very common. Everyone kind of dealt with them. Now, during that time, after World War II, we started to see them slowly go away to where they were gone. We did not see them in the United States, except from poultry farms and occasionally in an army barracks or somewhere like that, where they were brought back from overseas. But they never spread out. They were still found across the world and other places, but in the United States, they were gone. We just didn't have them. So one of the reasons is uh, we've had more frequent worldwide travel. Now when I say that the United States has had an increase in the past, say, 10 years, it's not just the United States, but worldwide. Australia, in a, uh, about a 10 year period, noted about a thousand fold increase in bed bug issues from the previous 10 years. And so across the world, Asia, South America, Central America, Europe, Bed bugs are just exploding. They're everywhere now. <clears throat> so we have more frequent travel. If you see this, a soldier's getting dusted with DDT. Okay, we don't have those pest management practices that we used to. And that was one of the benefits. 
DDT was placed down inside of a house, and if a bed bug comes in there a year or even two or even longer later and walks through that residue, it's going to die. We have nothing like that in our arsenal anymore. You know, during the 90s, we changed from spraying all the baseboards to start using more baits, start to use less pesticides to address more of the issues. Well, that are leading to pests. Well, that didn't necessarily bode well for when bed bugs were going to be coming back. Okay. Just one quick question, Robert. Mm -hmm. Could that be one big problem because of the resurgence, the it loss is. of the chlorinated It is. Carbon? Yeah, it, it is. It's these things. It's it's the loss, or it's more travel. It's the change in pest management practices and materials. We don't have a material that will last like that with DDT. That's why I say everyone in here is probably going to encounter bed bugs at one time or another somehow because we don't have the ability to wipe them out like we used to. We just don't have any type of material available at all. We can take care of them, those ones that are there, but any new that come in, you know, it's, it's kind of fair game. The other thing is the lack of public awareness. People are putting out in, uh, in New York City, there's a huge industry of, of taking old furniture and mattresses, refurbishing them, and then selling them to the public. Well, all that does is spread bed bugs, because they put on a new mattress top, and they spray it with disinfectant, and then you just have really clean bed bugs living in an uh, old mattress that looks new. And so that's the only difference. That stuff wouldn't kill the bed bugs. So it's these things that have led to this increase, but we don't have one smoking gun, unfortunately. We just don't know why they're gone. We have about 30 to 40 years missing research being done because these weren't a problem. The universities, the entomology departments didn't even study these things. It was just gone. Yeah? Uh, uh, the big uptick has really happened since 1989, since, since Eastern Europe opened up. Uh -huh. and, uh, we decided to squarely blame the Russians for this one. But <laughs> oh, blame the Russians, all right. Increase the drive. <laughs> all right, so ID. Here are the eggs. They're about one millimeter. You can see these have been opened up and the bed bugs have already emerged. You can see on top of this penny, there's a bed bug egg. So now you see how small it is, how hard it is to find all these things. Because if you're going to do a treatment and you miss an egg or an egg cluster, well, it's failed because they're going to emerge and it's going to start all over again. So you can see how small they are right there. Here's a full grown female bed bug. They're about the size of an apple seed. And here is a first in star or second in star nymph uh, bed bug. So this means it's gone through either uh, it's emerged or it's gone through its first feeding in one molt. And I'll show you and talk a little bit more about that in a second. <clears throat> but bed bugs, they're nocturnal. And they feed exclusively on blood. That's all they feed on. And they feed on us at night because that's when we're in our deepest sleep. Uh, that's when we're in our REM cycle sleep. So we're more still. And it's usually about 1 to 5 a.m. that uh, they, they feed. They call that true midnight. Now the females can lay 1 to 5 eggs a day, 500 in a lifetime. When they lay those eggs, they cement them onto a surface so they don't really move around. So they're not very easy to get rid of by just, you know, say sweeping them up or vacuuming. Um, it takes about seven to ten days for the egg to hatch, as long as you have good uh, conditions once they've been deposited. Now, from egg to adult, it takes about a month and a half, two months, and that's if you have good conditions. And the reason for that is they have to go through different molts, they call them instars. And so as that bed bug takes a blood meal, then it can shed its exoskeleton and grow into its next stage. Once it's done that five times, it's that hardened, dark colored bed bug, and it's sexually mature, and it doesn't need to molt anymore. So they don't seek a blood meal every day either. <clears throat> if you have a low level infestation, they might feed on you once and then wait a few days, wait a week. But when you start to get a big infestation, they could be, you know, they're all on different timetables and they're feeding pretty much all the time. So you're going to be being bed all the time. Um, during, in between feeding, they go and hide. So that's the other thing. We don't know a lot about these things because they go off into places that we can't see or get to after they've fed. So we don't know exactly what they're doing. The research is still.